Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. You know, sometimes they say you spread yourself a little too thin. When you got so many plans coming up, so many ideas that you want to do, and then there's a little trouble where you have a lack of funds or either the lack of equipment, or then there's times where the ideas just don't come to you. And then you know you're on the verge of a burnout where you try to attempt to keep working, but then there comes a part where it doesn't help you. So you have to go on a little siesta. Which I have. And you know something? I think it's the most opportune time to go ahead and come back so that I can get things started on the roll again. And that being said, welcome to the J-Man Show here on K360 Radio. Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better. At Aquavita, visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. Hey, J360 Legion, how is it going? This is the J-Man, just checking in to see how you all are doing, and welcome to episode 104. (laughs) Yes, sir, yes, sir, I am here. This is officially me, Uh, as if it wasn't for the last few episodes, right? Uh, So, I hope you all are doing well. Don't worry, you don't have to pinch yourself, I'm actually here. Yeah, I'm sorry it's been kind of off and on lately here at J360 Radio, but like I said in the cold open, you know, sometimes you just need a break from it all. And I don't like doing that because, see, the problem is when you take a break, then you have to get back into the flow of doing things. Then you have to go ahead and, you know, you have to find your way. You have to have your niche, and then you keep on working on the stuff. And, and I mean, that's part of the process. It happens. Like what uh, Ron Swanson, you know, the living legend from Parks and Rec said, you know, don't half-ass so many things, all ass one thing. Because, you know, Leslie Nope didn't have an idea, and she always was holding on to that that great idea, but it just didn't come to her. Little did she realize the answer was she needed to take a damn break. And well, so did I. I mean, like, I have great ideas, and I write them down all the time, but, you know, when you have that energy... And your energy is not with you that day. That's the perfect time to prop your feet up. And you see, I should feel that way about algebra, but that teacher will not give me a break. And I'm not trying to get any extensions from her. This is my time to make it count. So, you know, that's something I can't take too many breaks from. It'll happen sometime, but not all the time. And speaking of which, part of that break allowed me to um, really look into... What made me want to be a filmmaker and a content creator in the first place? You know, originally I wanted to do lots and lots of films. Now, the thing about doing lots of films are films take so much work. Especially if it's live action. Live action alone will just keep you keep you constantly busy. I mean, you're on set for like, you know, 12 to 16 hours a day, depending on how big the process is and if it's in your region or depending on what group you're you're in. I mean, let alone all the process of it. But the work is well-paying, and, you know, while it's hard in some areas, it's worth it in the end. You know, and and we all know it's hard. Hell, writing is hard. Hell, all this other stuff. I want you all to understand this. If you're in the J360 Legion, which you are if you have been paying attention to this show consistently, the thing about it is, take hard out of your vocabulary. It's difficult. It's tedious. It can be tiresome. But if it was meant to be easy, everybody would be doing it. And see, the problem was, when we had the digital revolution happen, and YouTube came along into our lives, 
and became pretty much a part of our everyday speech, along with live streaming, Twitter, and Google in general, along with Facebook, Facebook this, Facebook that, and everybody saying terms of service. You see, we don't really know what's high caliber and what isn't caliber anymore because we go through so much stuff on the daily. We get thrown so many things so often that, you know, it's either our attention spans go down or it's just nothing ever really surprises us anymore. And, like, we'll take a look at some of the movies from the past, even though those movies from the past are considered trendsetters and something of the genre. But in their time, they were just considered just movies. You know? Some people to this day are still killing themselves trying to write that perfect screenplay, which allegedly, according to some sources, is Chinatown. You know what I'm saying? Yes, the Jack Nicholson movie of the same vehicle that I'm talking about. They say that that quintessentially is the perfect screenplay. And we all know that ended on a guy next ending. Like, there was no resolution to the end of it. Everything was for nothing. It was a shaggy dog story. Now, I can go back and forth with you all about, like, what's so hard about writing, and the terms are probably going to be varied depending on who I interview or bring in for this show. But the truth is, it's just at the end of the day, like I tell you all, write it. But, see, for me, I wanted to be involved in animation, too. I wanted to work on creating cartoons, giving you guys something, you know, interested in the art form of animation, kind of like one of my idols back in the day, Ralph Bakshi, used to do. You know what I'm saying? His stuff wasn't kitty. I mean, some of it was, but not all of it. His stuff told you a story. Like, you could get a great graphic story out of anything from what Ralph Bakshi did. You know, and I'm not just talking Fritz the Cat, you know, but I'm talking, like, Wizards. I'm talking um, Fire and Ice. Uh, you know, he did Lord of the Rings, one of the first adaptations of Lord of the Rings back in the 70s. We only got a part one out of the deal, but I just love the detail and the crafting of what he did. And it's a shame that we never got a part two. Uh, That's something you can go ahead and look at Warner Brothers about. They didn't just start micromanaging with DC characters. Oh no, they've been a force to reckon with at one time. Or still are. Depending on which franchise you talk about. They've been doing okay with the Godzilla franchise though. For now. (laughs) But... Yeah, I always wanted to work on animation, so I took the time to actually look at some of the stuff in my library, because I have an extensive animation collection, from our brothers over there across the pond in the east, to plenty here in the west, which is why like, when people go into flame wars over who's got the better set, western or eastern animation, I just look at them, and I'm like, you know what, this would be the perfect time to go ahead and make them all destroy each other. Because at the end of the day, it's an art form shared by a lot of us. If you really don't think so, you should check out some called Nudnik, which I should put at the bottom of this. He's a silent character and nothing ever goes right for him. But, you know, you feel for him a little bit until you realize how surreal his world is. And yeah, yeah, Nudnik's good. And then you got Gustav from, um... God, he's from... I think he's from Austria, Hungary. But he's like a everyman character that's a caricature of things that go wrong in society. Kind of like how this show is from time to time. But, you see, I started spending a lot more time with the, uh, uh, it's uh, it's hard to pronounce his name, but I know the other person's name. I want to say Pate Fielding, Pate Fielding, you know, Fritz Fielding after he was um, working from Warner Brothers, you know what I mean? When they got rid of the animation studio for Warner Brothers, he partnered up with another producer named Pate. God, I got to get... You know what? I'll work on pronouncing his name. <laughs> but, you know, with Patetti. And they created a whole series of cartoons, such as the most famous being the Pink Panther. And you see, I got like four volumes of the Pink Panther, but I'm missing one. So I got to keep an eye on that one or just go ahead and buy a box set. And when that happens, uh, I'm going to try to sell these other ones. But you see, other than his character, there were plenty of other ones, too, like the Inspector based off of Inspector Clouseau. Uh, then there's um, there's uh, also Hoot Clute. Let's see, uh, Crazy Lakes Crane, the Tijuana Toads, which spun off Crazy Lakes Crane, and then, of course, also spun off um, the Blue Racer, which was the story about a snake that always went after a Japanese beetle. A stereotypical Japanese beetle at that, but stereotypes have always been in animation. It's just It's a framework that we all have to live with. 
And you see at the end of the day, those I could go on the whole soapbox and tell you how wrong racism was, but you all know this. You all know this. <laughs> but sometimes you just look at the stereotype and you're like, you know what? Some of it is a little funny. Because you guys, I don't know about you, but you see at my day job, I see people that talk exactly like that damn Japanese beetle. And it's like, what the hell is wrong with me? And I, and I just can't help it sometimes. I got to go to the corner and, you know, snicker a little. But that's only because it's in reference to the cartoon. And now that I explained that joke, I feel a lot more like an a-hole than usual. But <laughs> going back into it, though, like there's also the dog father and then there's Mr. Jaw. Yeah, yeah, y'all can go with that which way you want to. But Mr. Jaw was an interesting cartoon, to say the least. And as I watch each and every single, you know, each and every single cartoon, you know, I see, like, what they have worked hard on, the stuff that they try to talk about, and, and the design of the characters. But as I notice, like, when I go from... No, Hoot Clute. Did I mention Hoot Clute? Hoot Clute's a good one, too. But as I mentioned, it, you can see which cartoons were actually theatrical cartoons before they became made for television. Because when you see something that are made for television, kind of like when you look at Aladdin and then Return of Jafar, you see the quality kind of sucks. Like, from time to time, you look at it, you're like, yeah, this... One, you were using acrylics to get the job done, but on the other one, you were using watercolors. Cheap watercolors at that. Maybe even chalk. And I, I know, I know. But keep in mind this. Keep in mind this. It's not always the... It's not always the technique you use. It's the story of what you're trying to tell that should strengthen it. And when you got something on TV, you got to keep the budget, you know, stable so you can go ahead and put that content out there. So as I look at each and every single one, I, I can see from the topics of the day to all the stuff that they were making fun of, the dialogue and underlying factors, we need something like that now. And you see, some people have their cartoons out there, or they have their, you know, static images of cartoons, which is comics, you know, where they go ahead and they talk about those topics of the day. But sometimes they're either too blatant, or there are times where you just look and see, like, mm, trying too hard. You know, the clever pitch and tone of each thing is what is what is needed. So as I sit back and I look at them, I'm like, this this is funny. Like, sometimes it could be immoral, but the situation that each and every single character goes through is funny as hell. That is until you get to uh, Mr. Jaw. Now, you see, the Crazy Legs Crane and Mr. Jaw animations, they were, well, they had different music, and they had, um, oh my god, I almost forgot, Ant and Aardvark, but we'll get to that later. Uh, you see, when you look at Crazy Legs Crane and Mr. Jaw, the way they're designed... You can tell that these, these were made for TV. And you can see that some of the stuff, even though it's the same lineup of, you know, material, some of them start to become rehashes, then the music kind of kills the flow of the show. And if anything, it's, it's not as fun as it was, like, if you go all the way to the Pink Panther or to the Inspector or to, like, you know, even the Blue Racer. Like, in some of these shorts, because I guess they wanted to move on to different things at a time, they usually cap at about 17 episodes. Because there was a moment, even with the second set of Inspector cartoons, because he's luckily to make it to um, 34, his his second set of episodes were kind of running out of material. You know, at that point, that's when you realize your stuff becomes more formalistic. But as I look at this stuff, it, it keeps me more inspired. It warms me up into going ahead and doing something better. And that's what actually, after I went on this little siesta for a bit, just catching up on all this cool stuff and having a laugh, I decided to go ahead and write up a few things for J360 TV, and I started working on the branding and the logos and stuff for it. Like, one way or another, I'm coming back strong, and I'm going to knock out so many things from this year going into the next few years. I hope to get some animation classes under my belt so I could go ahead and give you guys some pretty good material. Because there's plenty of things in animation that you just can't do in live action. No matter how hard you try. And the problem with live action is, see, unless you're Judge Doom or something, you're not a cartoon in live action. 
So the problem is that stuff will follow you and want a little bit more in live action in some ways. Like, oh, you made this joke here. You did all this stuff here. That's not right. Uh, oh, we can't take it. Our sensitivities are showing. Yeah, so is many other things I don't want to see. But the truth is, is that I'm going to be me anyway. Nowadays, it's time to stop caring too much about those fifis and tell the story that needs to be told. So that's what I'm going to try to do. If I can't do it in live action, I can do it in animation. I just have to work with it. And then also, I managed to find the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles complete set the other day. Along with Rocky and Bullwinkle, along with, um, well, the Peabody and Sherman separate set here. And I only got this because just in case I don't want to put the Rocky and Bullwinkle set in. Because, I mean, you're talking, I mean, you're talking 196 episodes, right? So, hey, I don't have that much time. But, you know, when I watch those things... Sometimes the best time to watch them is at night because, like, you get to see the colors pop in a way, you know? It, it feels pretty interesting. That pretty much is the animated radio show. Like, the limited animation alone actually helps that kind of show. And I've seen that they uh, rebooted Rocky and Bullwinkle 2 for uh, Amazon Prime. I don't know if it's funny or not, but what, what, what counts as humor nowadays, you know? Because, I mean, when you go for real biting humor... Kind of like how Eddie Murphy Raw is, unless you're in that group, and even then it's iffy, people are so sensitive now, they'll just try to chew you out for no reason on it. And it's like, well, maybe there has to be some true to form because you are butt hurt as hell. That's what I always say. But, as I will mansplain, you know, I, and then I see, like, I have my Love Hina collection here. I still need to get three more season sets of Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, fillers and all, folks. I, I just want to get them because you know why? Because if I explain the filler instead of just showpiecing some of the filler, you know, <laughs> then you won't know what the hell I'm talking about. And some of those things that they've taken out when it came to, like, the, uh, what was it, Dragon Ball Z Kyrie releases, they were kind of okay. Believe it or not, I'll probably make another episode where I talk about some anime fillers that I actually liked. And no, not the Garlic Jr. Saga. Even though Gohan was... Gohan held his own in that, you know, it, it was somewhat of a good sequel to Dead Zone. It, it, it was just... Something about it I didn't really care for. But, you know, we live and learn, right? So, also, also, there is a dime piece I need to get. There is a certain anime series I need to uh, look into getting. And it is one of my hidden favorites. I love watching a lot of the episodes online when I could. Fist of the North Star. That has to come to the house. Because I managed to get Outlaw Star that one day. And that was on a luck and a draw. Because I went to FIE, FYE the other day. <laughs> and I saw it sitting there, man. And I was like, you know what? Yoink! Because I got it for 20 bucks. I just had to. It, it, it's a part of my growth, man. And I, and I love the series and the adventures of Gene Starwin. You know, the space pilot that had a hard time flying in space because of issues. And this time, I can watch it without seeing a whole bunch of commercial breaks and other stuff cutting things out. And the same thing with the Tenchi Muyo series. At least the OVA. Because when that came out for 13 episodes, I was like, mm, yeah, I gotta get all these. And the same thing goes for Tenchi Universe, but see, I don't have that one, so that's that's on the list. So that's just little things like that, and um, one way or another, I'm gonna get um, I'm gonna look into getting Yu Yu Hakusho first, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get Sailor Moon. And before you all ask, I'm gonna tell you why. That theme song alone will make you want to buy the damn series and watch it. And Sailor Moon's okay. It can be a little com comedic and formalistic from time to time, but it's still a good series. And I mean, the same can be said about any of these magical power characters and stuff from time to time. You know, they get their asses kicked, or they get talked down, or they go through the heroic uh, blue screen of death, and then they need like a few episodes to get back together and jump back into the fight. It happened to me earlier. You know, as I kept saying, yeah, we're going to get episode 104 ready. We're going to get episode 104 ready. And it's like, you know, I was pushing for it the whole way along, but I could tell when I was running low on stuff, because you know why? It just wasn't me. And that's how you know. But when I got that new TV to go ahead and build the retro station, which has all my old retro consoles on it, 
I need to bring over the Xbox 360 and hook it up, too. Because I miss playing Halo. Which, by the way, for those of you that have Xbox One, uh, keep an eye out in a couple of months. I might be coming to visit. And the thing is, is this. As this whole thing is set up, it's going to be a part of J360 TV. I won't tell you what show, because I've probably given it away in other episodes, and I'm tired of repeating myself. But J360 TV is coming together as it should be. And I'm just laying out all the programs for you. Now, some of y'all have probably uh, le- probably were wondering, am I going to stop doing J360 Radio for J360 TV? The answer is no. Matter of fact, I'm going to keep doing both of them. I like them too much. I, like, J360 Radio is on such a, such a good track record right now, and it is booming in other areas. You know, I, I had somebody over at the day job talking to me about it. And, and I was like, I didn't know you were a fan of the show. I was like, hey, okay. Hey, I guess I need to keep doing what I'm doing then. So I won't mess that up. So still have J360 Radio. You'll have J360 TV. Now how I will counterbalance these things, you'll find that out in a in a different way. Uh, for those of you on the Facebook, I will be using the Facebook group more as a trial. So we'll see how this all turns out. If you like it, cool. If you don't like it, well... It means I got to go back to the drawing board. You just can't let stuff get to you. Which is interesting to me because some people let too much get to them, yet they still make money and then they still act like they're entitled and people owe them something whenever they get caught up in some uh, hypocritical bull. To which I talked about in a mini bite. (laughs) Man, you know, but, but you know what? I'll be honest with you all. It's good that there are other content creators out there like that. You know why? Because it lets me know of who I shouldn't become. I don't need to be somebody like that. That's somebody with a problem. That's somebody that needs some help. That's somebody that should not have gotten involved with certain people in the first place. So, you know what I'm saying? The beautiful part about that is I don't even have to worry about it. So I'll just stick to being me, being humble, and working with other people out there. For those of you that wanted me to guest star on your shows, I mean, like I said, use the email or hit me up on the J360 hotline. Or here's the thing. Uh, For film redemptions, why don't you guys drop me a line sometime? After all, I'm open to anything, even that, uh, well, I don't know. See, because that Twilight SBS is not, not really my forte, but I can endure it. We'll call it an endurance round or something. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but then again, I, I haven't seen those movies in years. Have they gotten better with age? Probably not. But I can say the same thing about Fifty Shades of Grey, maybe. Because from what I heard, the first one was brilliant, but the second two were just... The other two were just... They could not stick the landing with those films. I wonder if that's like the books at all. Probably not. Probably not. Uh, by the way, I heard Adventures Endgame is going back to the movies. There's going to be additional uh, post scenes, I think. Or some sort of things that you probably didn't see. Either because you went ahead and bought a big gulp before you went to the premiere, or you just found another way to just try to sneak out so you can somehow miss important stuff in the movie. See, with me, myself, I bought a drink, yeah. But here's the thing, I didn't drink it. I sat right there and I watched the whole movie... Because I just didn't want to miss anything. And that's just three hours of dealing with, you know, a lot of story and a lot of subplots to tie up, at least for this phase. And while I'm going to miss Iron Man, the thing is, is this. I hope there's not an alternative ending where it just messes up that ending. Because if there is, then all of these memes and all of these appreciations and atonements that a lot of us true fans out there, and I really shouldn't say true fans because... You know, but then again, real fans probably wouldn't care as much because it's time to move on to Spider-Man time. But what I'm saying is, because if you are a part of the fandom, it doesn't matter. You're still a fan in some recollection. But you see, a lot of people didn't want didn't want Robert Downey Jr. to stop playing Iron Man. That's why they're butt hurt. You know what I'm saying? And he's done a great job with it, but it's time for him to hang it up. To which he did, and he could rest. So let the character rest. Just in the books, he's still alive. I mean, pick up a comic book, go read it. He's still being Iron Man, and he's still doing what he does. You never know. 
This is where the source material of the character is, so you can enjoy him on that level anytime you want to. It's the same thing I feel about Captain America, even with Secret Invasion. Or not Secret Invasion, Secret Empire, Secret Empire. Secret Invasion was that one with the scrolls. Yeah, yeah, see? I know my comics, too. Which, at the same time, you know, I should get some more. But, 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 but. The thing is, though, this whole thing is really about money. And it's really about Kevin Fiji wanting to break the Avatar record. You know Avatar, right? Avatar is one of those... It's supposed to be part of a movie series that somehow, one way or another, that sequel probably won't come out until 2022. And the thing is, at that point, will we still be waiting for it? Because the first Avatar was good, yes. But the problem is, it's all owned by Disney now. And Disney's not looking to push that yet, because guess what? There's still a whole wealth of things in Star Wars to talk about. But then you realize, right, that this company pretty much owns everything. So the worst part of it all is, it could be a power struggle, or it could be, you know, one of those things that will be shelved until an indefinite point in time, like the New Mutants movie. Which at the same time is a waste of everyone's time. Because we all kind of want to see this. And you know, like, you would consider that since Disney did not turn their back on this franchise, because there's a whole area called Pandora over there on their Disney parks. So it's like, you know what, at the end of the day, why don't you just go ahead and push this movie, at least the sequel, let it be two good films. I mean, like, were they really a uh, pinnacle of great films? I think the technology was interesting. And the story was pretty much Pocahontas' story. So, to me, not really. But I love the way it was in terms of aesthetics. However, however, that's something y'all are going to have to deal with on your own. Because me, myself, I make pieces with these kind of things. It's just like when that Hellboy movie came out, you know? It, it was supposed to be the bigger, darker, edgier reboot, right? And it was supposed to fire off all cylinders. Everything looked great. But as soon as you sat there and experienced it, it was nowhere near as good as, you know, Ron Perlman's uh, stink as um, as Hellboy. Matter of fact, it was a far cry. And I wanted to like this film. Because finally, one of my favorite superheroes is coming back and it seemed like they're not deviating from the source material that much and giving something, you know, pretty pretty interesting but not only did they deviate they also marinated in it there was a whole lot of problems going on in that it's just it's sickening and i was thinking this maybe if it was like the uh anchor film like how the other one was because the other one you know the first one was more of a slow success like, I think the other one came out in August, right? Like, it didn't come out around March time, did it? Well, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I like to think that it came out in August and it slowly but surely made its money to where it was enough interest for the second one. Now, the second one, however, I thought the second one was funny. I, I enjoyed the second one for its fantastic elements. And, uh, you know, other people just didn't like it that way or they just saw, like... Nothing was going to be resolved from it, and it didn't go as well as it should have. Even though I kind of wanted to see what the kids looked like, because Liz was pregnant, right? So, and then it turned out it wasn't one, but it was two. And then they said he's going to bring about Armageddon, which we all know that Hellboy is prone to do that. It is in his destiny, but he also has a choice. Which is what makes his conviction even more, or his struggle, even more likable. Nothing wrong with it. And sometimes, you know, now that I think about it, I don't mind too much of something deviating from the source material, but not to the point where it's unrecognizable or it's just a movie with the name painted on it, kind of like 2003's Hulk and, you know, 1998's uh, Godzilla. Those are just completely different movies in a way. And if you look at uh, 2003's Hulk, man, uh, yeah, the Shrek means still hold a place on it because, God... He, he he was more passive-aggressive in that movie than just Rage Monster, whereas he was Rage Monster in 2008, but nobody liked that movie as much as they, you know, as you want to think that they did. 
Though they got him right in the other Avengers movies, and in Avengers Endgame, it's a toss-up. Even though he pretty much saved everybody. You, you gotta give him that, but he's supposed to be the Hulk. He's supposed to be able to recover from any physical damages like that, but I guess this is beyond his pain threshold, maybe? Uh, that's probably one of the things to look at. But who knows? And at the end of the day, that's when things deviate from the source material. Now, however, as I've been talking your ear off about a couple of things, I know some people have been saying the Lakers are going back to the finals. R- really? Are, are they doing that next year? Is that the plan? I mean, with LeBron and, and Anthony Davis, is that what's going to happen? You really think so? You see, I know they used to play together, but I know at one time, right? You see, one of them wants to be the star. And I think nine times out of ten, it's probably going to be Bron Bron. But you see, Bron wants to look into other avenues anyway. And maybe Anthony Davis could probably be the star of the team. Maybe. But I don't see that happening with this. Like I said before, it's cool that they're making big moves. It's cool that things are coming together to a point. But right now, it's just talk. There's nothing concrete. I want to see some contendership. But for me, myself, I would say it would probably be either the Blazers or it probably be the Houston Rockets if they just get that ego crap under control to be the next ones up in there. Because, you know, I don't think the Warriors are really going to keep everybody. That's just me saying that. I mean, I'm being honest. But you, you got to think that for a little bit. Some Something about this is weird. But that's just me, myself, saying it. However... I want to see my boys on the Sixers get their acts together and do what they got to do. And hopefully, hopefully, we'll be in contendership so we can finally get that fourth, you know, get that fourth ring. You know what I'm saying? We've only managed to have two with the Sixers name. And we we got that one when we were the Syracuse, uh, or we were the Syracuse Nationals. Or was it Warriors? One of the two. But, you know, using my sports history here, throwing a little noggin over there, uh, I got to see what the Eagles are going to be doing, too, because it's going to be that time. I get the feeling this summer is going to pass by pretty quick, so I got to make sure that I get ready for that, because I know the Cyclone is definitely going on J360 TV. So that's a little spoiler for y'all. And since uh, since we went into my little in-game talk, it's almost Spider-Man time. And I wish Sony wouldn't tease us as much, or Kevin Fiji. No, this is Kevin Fiji's statement about, like, you know, Venom and Spider-Man are going to cross over at some point. Okay, fine. Whatever you say, just build up towards it. And let's see where we go from here. I'm interested in seeing what those X-Men plans are going to be. But I also hope that, uh, hey, if Galactus is coming, you know, to be the overall villain for the next phase... That might actually be some good. But chances are it's probably going to deal with the Eternals, most likely. You know, little issues like that. But other than that, though, I've already talked to you off enough for one episode. So I'm going to leave it with this, guys. It was good to be here and do the show for you all again. I know now that it's... uh, I I won't take off so long as much. You know, one day, who knows. But... If you don't get an episode, chances are I'll be back and we'll pick it up and we'll do what needs to be done for the new slate, right? Right. But until then, this is the J-Man signing off. Peace. Two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. 
That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.